years ago, a taste of the Philippines now has a brick and mortar location inside the French market. Owner and chef Kathy Vega Hardy is here in our Studio 41 kitchen and is teaching us how to create the ultimate Filipino feast. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. So I was asking you earlier, is this more of a sweet, a savory, a salty? How would you describe Filipino cuisine? I would say mostly savory, but we do have a couple dishes in the Philippines that are a little bit on the sweeter side. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is this? What's the correct name of the feast? It's a Kamayan feast. So Kamayan, Kamayan means hands in Tagalog, our native language there in the Philippines. Yeah. Okay. So you eat everything with, the, with your hands? Uh, not necessarily, but like on if you want to do like a big party or something with your family and stuff. So obviously with COVID, I'm sure they don't do it as much right, right now. Yeah. But but you actually just did one last night in Oswego, so. Okay, cool. and it went over very well, I'm assuming. Yes, oh, they all loved it. And then the grandma and the tita, or the, the aunts actually approved it, so that makes oh, it extra special. Okay, oh. there you go. So <laughs> that ultimate Filipino feast, we're looking at it right there on the table, and it's laying on banana leaves. Yes, so the banana leaves serves as like the platter. Okay. So as you know, it's very authentic in the Philippines. This actually came from the Philippines, frozen, so we just, kind of thaw it out, wash it out, and wipe it down. So okay. oh, cool. this is what it is. And describe everything on there. On the oh, sure. So we got the banana leaves as a platter. Obviously, we have to have the rice, because everyone loves rice in the Philippines. Yep. And then this dish, I'll just use the tongs. Um, the lumpias, this is what I'm known for. It's hand-rolled egg rolls. Yum. So it's stuffed with ground pork, Ooh. garlic, onions, cabbage, and carrots. And mm. then this is my homemade sweet and sour sauce. Oh, delicious. And then... I mean, That's what you're cooking this, right now, right? It is. So okay. I just wanted to make some freshies for you guys. Oh, we too. love it. Oh, yeah. And then also, so we have on top of the rice, we'll talk about the national dish in the Philippines, unofficial national dish. It's called chicken adobo. Okay. So I like to cook it with the bone in, just gives it more flavor. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So it's um, chicken braised with soy sauce. Uh, vinegar, garlic, bay leaves, peppercorns, and the aroma of the bay leaves just, ugh, it's so good. Uh -huh. Everyone, I think when you first walk, I'm one of the first people to um, start setting up and cooking at the French market. I think that's one of the first things you smell. Yeah. When you walk through the door. And then, um, this is the Cebu Lechon. So it's pork belly. We wrap it and stuff it with lemongrass, garlic, a little bit of ginger, um, and Onions. onions and oh, yeah. oh it's just it's so good so when do you good. typically eat this type of feast is it holidays is it birthdays is it any time um i would say you can eat it any time because i see some of my clients i'm not going to name names <laughs> but um i see some of them two three times a week so, oh okay. which has been awesome like earl he's He's at the French market to see us at least once a week. That's so. okay. awesome. <laughs> right, and, and is there something else? And then this one is the chicken tocino. I kind of did my own spin to it. It's actually a breakfast dish in the Philippines. So you could do, um, it's like a, you do it with chicken or pork, but I like to do it in in a drumstick form too. So mm. it's usually served in the morning for breakfast. You serve it with garlic rice with the side of egg. Uh -oh. But you can you can put that and you know you can put egg any any time yeah. but I serve it for lunch and dinner. So okay. Wonderful. So we talked about how you started in Denver and you migrated to Chicago. Talk about that journey, how you ended up here. Oh for sure. So I actually grew up in the Philippines. My dad moved us to Springfield, Illinois and I don't know why. <laughs> I'm like anywhere in the city or in the U.S., in this, in Springfield, exactly. Illinois. Yeah. But yeah, so I just needed a change, so I moved to Denver, got kind of bored out there. I, you know, I needed, I did what I needed to do out there, yeah. and it was time for me to, you know, like kind of challenge myself professionally, so what better way to challenge yourself with Chicago? Food yeah. so, and Food City, I think it's the best food city in the U.S., in the world, I think. But yeah, so I just wanted the challenge. And so in uh, 2016 or 2017, I started going back and forth. Like I would be here for 10 days, getting licensed, doing farmer's markets in South Loop. And then I would go back to Denver and then just kind of went back and forth. So at the end of the year, I'm like, that's exhausting. Yes. As much as I love both, like snowboarding and hiking and in Denver, I'm like, I can't, I can't nurture the business if I'm in two cities. Yeah. So I made the hard decision to sell my food truck, sell the, you know, um, it, 
you know, it was kind of sad, but at the same time, it was it Exciting. was the right thing for me to yeah. do. And, and you know, and actually being at the French market, I'm actually getting goosebumps. Oh. Um, being at the French market was actually my five-year goal. Oh, good. And I opened in three years, so that was like something I'm really proud of. So, and here I am. And then I started off at South Loop Farmers Market, Daily Plaza. And then open in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. You're like <laughs> a, a glutton for punishment, but it looks like it's doing good. Can we come over and try some? Yes, okay. please do. I want to try the rolls. And we can't yes. not talk about the dessert. Oh, of course. So, of course. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Tell oh, us about the dessert. For sure. So this is um, ube is a very popular ingredient mm -hmm. in the Philippines. So it's purple yam. It's kind of like in the sweet potato family. Um, so we use it. We use extract because. I don't have time to make the actual hube and everything. This is actually the homemade sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. I brought extra ones if you want to try. Okay. Oh, good. Fantastic. Um, so, this is a ube chocolate chip cookie. Mm. My sous chef, Derek. Hi, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. I am totally lucked out with him, but uh, he mm. makes these. Mm -hmm. And then these are the ube cheesecake bites. It's um, it's my own spin on the cheesecakes, mm -hmm. but instead uh, we don't have room. <laughs> so yeah, um, smarter. Yes, it is. So instead of in lieu of uh, a, an actual cheese cheesecake form or cake form, I just uh, put the cheese, uh, the in cream cheese in and stuff, That's and then great. crumble Oreos Fantastic. and then drizzle it with a lot of purple. Well, we got all the information for Indeed. on the screen. This is delicious. Thank you so yes, much for coming is. here. I love I it. I love the sweet Thank and sour sauce. Thank you. Sauce. Thank yeah. you.